in the early days of dinosaur research, the natural consensus was that dinosaurs were reptilian. So dinosaurologists concluded that they were poikilothermic, like crocodiles, snakes, and turtles. When we think of cold-blooded animals, we may often think of animals with literally cold blood. Strictly speaking, however, this is inaccurate. Poikilothermic means that an animal's body temperature varies, usually according to its environment, but this does not necessarily mean that its blood is cold. Similarly, the expression for warm-blooded animals is homeotherm, or an animal that maintains a regular body temperature. Now, were dinosaurs really cold-blooded animals whose body temperatures, like reptiles, changed based on their environment? Let's delve into the story of dinosaur thermal regulation. In 1960, a time when dinosaurs were widely considered to be reptiles, our perception of dinosaurs reached a major paradigm shift. At the helm of this change were Professor John Ostrom and Deinonychus. Professor John Ostrom argued that this dinosaur bore a lot of resemblance to birds, and argued that birds evolved from dinosaurs. His claim caused an outcry among academics who firmly believed that dinosaurs were reptiles. Professor Ostrom was then criticized for his radical idea, but in actuality, there were many similarities between birds and dinosaurs, such as air sacs, furcula bones, and their pelvic structures. Eventually, his argument gained more evidence, and from then on, the argument that dinosaurs were closer to birds than reptiles began gaining ground. And because birds are homeotherms, the winds of change began blowing toward the idea that dinosaurs were cold-blooded animals. This change began in 1968 with Dr. Bob Barker, a student of Professor Ostrom's. He came up with the argument that dinosaurs must have been warm-blooded animals, like modern mammals and birds, which keep their body temperature constant. His reasons were quite varied. First of all, the idea was that since some dinosaurs were bipedal, which involves a gait that can move actively and is the same as that of many warm-blooded animals today, they would have been homeothermic. Also, if you look at the number of dinosaur fossils discovered, the ratio of herbivorous dinosaurs to carnivorous dinosaurs is 10 to 1. The number of carnivorous dinosaurs is significantly lower, as is the case with homeotherms like mammals. Because cold-blooded animals don't need to maintain a constant body temperature, meaning they eat relatively less food, the ratio of herbivores to carnivores is about 1-1. On the other hand, homeotherms like mammals need to eat a lot of food to maintain their body temperatures, which leads to an increase of herbivores compared to carnivores. Also, the discovery of blood vessels within cross-sections of dinosaur bones, a feature found in modern mammals, and the fact that long-necked sauropods require tremendously powerful hearts to pump blood to their heads, like in homeotherms like the giraffe, were all confirmed. The list goes on. Dr. Barker's argument that dinosaurs were, in fact, warm-blooded used a truly comprehensive cadre of evidence. But it did have its flaws. First of all, using the discovered fossil ratio between herbivores and carnivores to support an argument about dinosaur thermoregulatory systems didn't make much sense. But there was a larger problem. Dinosaurs seemed way too big to have been homeothermic. A larger body means a lower surface area to volume ratio which can make it difficult for an animal to release its body heat. Elephants normally operate during dawn and dusk, taking mud baths during the day to cool off. How could the largest of dinosaurs have managed their body heat? Another issue was food. Homeotherms need to eat enough to maintain their body temperature. So if dinosaurs were homeothermic, the Mesozoic forests would have probably been raised to the ground. Also, in the 1980s, lines of arrested growth were discovered in dinosaur bones. Lines of arrested growth are similar to annual growth rings on trees, as they show how environmental living conditions influence an animal's growth rate. Because lines of arrested growth are unique to reptiles and amphibians, most people firmly believe that dinosaurs were poikilothermic. However, in 2012, paleontologist Micah Kohler published a paper on nature that would upend this belief. Analyzing 115 ruminants from 40 species of mammal, she discovered lines of arrested growth within the mammal's bones. As a result, the existing belief that arrested growth lines were unique to reptiles and amphibians, as well as the argument that dinosaurs were poikilothermic, lost their credibility. 
However, as the study didn't prove that dinosaurs were cold-blooded, theories about dinosaur thermoregulation systems weren't unified and eventually diverged. Some paleontologists have even argued that dinosaurs were gigantothermic. Gigantothermy is a phenomenon where a large body dissipates heat relatively slowly, leading to very consistent body temperature. Modern reptilian megafauna, like saltwater crocodiles and leatherback sea turtles, exhibit this trait. These animals are poikilothermic, but due to their size, can maintain body temperatures around 25 degrees Celsius while swimming around in 7 degree ocean water, almost homeothermically. However, while gigantothermy may make sense for dinosaurs like sauropods, if we remember that some dinosaurs were less than a meter tall, it becomes unreasonable to view all dinosaurs as having been gigantotherms. Ah, this is giving me a headache. Between homeothermy and poikilothermy. Which were the dinosaurs? In his book, Dinosaur Odyssey, Fossil Threads in the Web of Life, Dr. Scott D. Sampson makes a fresh argument in this decades-long debate. That's right, it was about the mesothermy theory. The current biological systems of animals are polarized into cold-blooded animals that spend little energy maintaining their body temperature, and warm-blooded animals that must expend a lot of energy to maintain body temperature. Mesothermy is somewhere in between. Dr. Scott argued that dinosaurs used less energy to maintain body temperature than mammals and relatively more energy for growth and reproduction. If his hypothesis is correct, it would explain the dinosaurs' rapid growth in various flamboyant organs. And he argued that not all dinosaurs were mesothermic, and that some of them would have evolved into endothermic homeotherms that maintained their body temperature by producing their own heat. A prime example of this is Manny Raptora. Dr. Scott also shows dinosaur featheredness to be strong evidence of homeothermality. He also notes that few species of Manny Raptorans weighed more than a thousand kilograms, and the relatively small size of these dinosaurs may have been because they were endothermic homeotherms. Animals, such as mammals and birds, which generate their own body heat, stop growing at an appropriate level because it is difficult to dissipate heat when their bodies grow too large. This may have been the case with Manny Raptora. In other words, he argued that mesothermic dinosaurs evolved from poikilothermic reptiles and some dinosaurs evolved towards homeothermic systems like many raptorids, some of which evolved into modern-day birds. While Dr. Scott's theory of mesothermic dinosaurs is not yet considered to be a scientific theory, several studies supporting this claim are emerging in recent academic circles. In 2015, Professor Robert Eagle of UCLA learned about the body temperature of dinosaurs by analyzing the bonding ratio of the radioactive isotopes carbon and oxygen contained in dinosaur egg fossils. Simply put, the lower the temperature, the higher the carbon-oxygen bonding ratio. Professor Eagle deduced the body temperature of a dinosaur by analyzing the bonding ratio of the molecules within the fossil. As a result, he found that the body temperature of Titanosaurus was 37.6 degrees Celsius and that of Oviraptor was 31.9 degrees. These temperatures are higher than reptiles and lower than birds, adding credence to Scott's mesothermy theory. In 2014, Professor John Grady of the University of New Mexico also published a paper in the journal Science comparing the growth rates of 21 dinosaurs and 360 species of animal, which supported the mesothermy theory for dinosaurs. In general, cold-blooded animals like reptiles grow slowly due to their slow metabolism, whereas warm-blooded animals, such as mammals, grow very rapidly. Analyzing dinosaur bone cross-sections, Professor Grady discovered that dinosaur growth rates were right in the middle between cold-blooded animals and warm-blooded animals. However, opinions are still divided about dinosaurs' body thermoregulation system, and unfortunately, none of them have been as widely accepted. But maybe, just maybe, their indefiniteness is what makes dinosaurs all the more mystical. At this point, I'd really love to just hop into a time machine and visit the Age of Dinosaurs. Science is a window to the world. This has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.